Hi folks, God bless you, love to everybody out there. We are doing a, a live show and it's a very important topic. So let's pray and let's uh, think about this topic and uh, go into it in a, in a deep way. So let's pray. So Father God, we come before you, we give you the prayers, we give you the glory, we give you the honor. We thank you for your goodness, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your blessings, O oh Lord, and we give you the prayers and we give you the glory. And so, Father, I just pray that you bless this study uh, for your glory, Lord, and I pray that it be an encouragement to us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Those who come on the live stream, please uh, share. Please uh, let people know that the live stream is on. And, um, yeah, so that we can get into uh, the Word of God. Please share far and wide please let people know it's an important video it's going to help a lot a lot of people it's going to encourage a lot of people so uh, please share it please let people know now pass it on on whatsapp pass it on on facebook pass it on on the internet you need to share this video far and wide get it some traction get it out there and get people thinking about this topic so a, a friend of mine uh, sent me a video clip and i've heard uh Bob, Bob is a, an apologist uh, in Speaker's Corner. Uh, he does apologetics there, uh, defending uh, Christianity, or some would say Bobbyanity, um, against the Muslims. And I've got no beef with uh, Soko. Uh, JC's a, a friend. He, he's been a, an encouragement to me. Um, but someone sent me this video clip. And I've seen these kind of things before. And I just felt, I just, I honestly felt I had to say something. Something has to be said. You know, Bob is doing, he's, he's very good at debating and he's doing a, a great job in many, many ways. I'm not denying that. He's a brilliant debater. But too many people are listening, not only to Bob, but too many people are listening to people like um, Inspiring Philosophy, and other apologists who who are brilliant minds they're brilliant minds they're brilliant thinkers bob's brilliant he's got a good mind i, I don't deny that he's a brilliant debater better debater than me he's got a brilliant mind uh, nobody can take away from him and he's won some amazing debates no one can take that away from him inspiring philosophy brilliant mind um excellent mind and made many many good videos and there are others like these bob and inspiring philosophy they're very brilliant they can do some good debates but theologically they're very very wonky and not only wonky but dangerous very dangerous in some of the statements being made i don't want to make this video i really really don't i think i like bob i think he's a, a nice guy i don't want to derog derogate put the man down or anything like that um he's he's uh, you know i don't want to do that uh, i like inspiring philosophy I, I, I like some of these uh evangelists like uh, apologists but it, it has to be said they are not sound evangelical and they're getting a pass all the time everybody's saying oh they're, they're doing great they're doing great doing great but there are theological issues that are being thrown under the bus. Oh, we're all one. We're all ecumenical. We're all one. But you can say things that are really, really dodgy, but it's okay. We're all one in Christ. That's not correct. So we're going to look at a topic. Uh, I'm going to show you the video now, the video clip uh, that was sent to me. And I've heard this on a fuller context. I've seen it in a fuller context of uh, discussion. So this was sent to, to me. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I can. Uh... Because there are three things at play. You've got different translations. You've got different variations in there. of translations. So it's not me making it you've up. Got Textual variants I'll cover the and you've got name. questions around canonicity. However, before I dig in 
to that question, I want to explain something to the good man. Christianity is not dependent on the Bible. If you what? think that, then you don't what? know what you're talking about and your RE teacher failed you at school. Yes. Eh? Christianity is dependent upon the message of the church. And that message, ladies and gentlemen, you want to just stand there, bro? The, the message of the church, ladies and gentlemen. No, 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 no. This is crazy. It's crazy, man. Let's listen to it. I'm covering the person's name. I don't want the person's name to be seen because they want privacy. But let's listen to it again. He's saying, well, listen. Because there are three things at play. You've got different translations. You've got different variations on translations. You've got textual variants. And you've got questions around canonicity however before i dig into that question i want to explain listen, something listen, listen. to the good man christianity is not dependent on the bible eh, no. if you think that then you don't know what you're talking about and your re teacher failed you at school Yes. Christianity is dependent upon the message of the church. No. And that message. No, no, no. Christianity is The message of the church, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it's got it. It's got it. Because there are three things at play. You've got different translations. You've got different variations on translations. You've got textual variants. And you've got questions around canonicity. However, before I dig into that question, I want to explain something to the good man. Christianity is not dependent on the Bible. Oh, if no, you think that, man. then you don't know what you're talking about. No, you don't and know what you're talking about, bro. failed you at school. Yes. No, Christianity man. is dependent upon the message of the church. And that message, ladies and gentlemen, you want to just stand there, bro. Christianity is lying. The message of the church, ladies and gentlemen. No, this is crazy, man. No, the, he's saying we're, we're not, the, the church is not, uh, sorry, we're not dependent. I, I can't, I can't, honestly, I, I, I don't understand people. I, I don't understand how someone like Bob, who is doing all this apologetics with the brilliant mind that he has, how on earth he can be saying things like this. And Christians there, and people do not pull him up about it. Uh, why do you allow him to be saying these things, this kind of nonsense? Let me, for those who don't understand, and why you don't understand, I don't, I, I can't understand. But it's simple. The, the Christianity is is founded on the Bible. It's it's on the Bible, the Word of God, the message that we have about who Jesus is and what he did for us it's in the bible so it's dependent on the bible first and foremost and the message comes from the bible the message does not stand independent of the bible the message message only has validity because it's in the word of god because the word of god teaches us who jesus is what he did and teaches us about the prophets and about the apostles of what they said so this is heretical stuff. It's really, really dangerous stuff because you're saying that the Bible is not that important. It's the message. Well, that is, that is what we call neo-orthodoxy. Karl Barth, Emil Brunner, people like that who were not evangelical, they were not born again, would say that. And it's also a very Catholic here. I'll put some comments here. Thank you, uh, 
uh, Lee lives and I'm not happy with Bod's statement either. And I, I friend, uh, dependent on the message of the church, blasphemy behind Catholicism. Yeah, too right, bro. Too right. We're spot on. Spot on. Let's listen to it again. We we uh, we're going. I'm going to show you from the Bible that we're dependent on the Bible. That the message is dependent on the Bible. And to say that the, we're we're not. That Christianity is not dependent on the Bible, but the message is heretical. It's just completely heretical. It's heretical. And yet you're all listening to Bob and you're all clapping and saying, great. I'm sorry, Bob, but it's not right, bro. It's not right. You're not correct. You might be the smartest guy on the block at Speaker's Corner. You might be brilliant at debate, bro. But you don't even know the basics of christian theology you don't know the basics you're obviously influenced by catholicism or something like that you're not influenced by the bible by the word of god you know so every step of the way i'm going to play so god created the heavens and the earth okay and creation tells us there's a God in Romans 1, 19, 20, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. But since the creation of the world is invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse, Romans 1, 19, 20. Creation teaches us there is a God, but creation cannot save us. Creation cannot save us. So God gave us the word of God to show us salvation because our minds look at creation. Creation doesn't tell us how to get saved. God had to speak to us in his word. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 2, You shall not add to the word which I command you, nor take anything from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Deuteronomy 4 2. Listen to Bob. Because there are three things at play. You've got different translations. You've got different variations on translations. You've got textual variants. And you've got questions around canonicity. However, before I dig into that question, I want to explain something to the good man. Christianity is not dependent on the Bible. If you think that, then you don't know what you're talking about and your RE teacher failed you at school. Yes. Christianity is dependent Die. upon the message of the church. Die. And that message, ladies Good and gentlemen, if you want to just stand there, bro. Christianity the, the message of the church, ladies and gentlemen. So you heard it there. You heard him. The church is not dependent, Christianity is not dependent on the Bible, it's dependent on the message. And a, 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 a chap here said, the church created the Bible, so therefore Christianity is based on the church. This is silly, stupid, uh, stupid argumentation. The word of God is still a the, theopneustos. Come on. Theopneustos, look, come with me. To 2 Timothy 3.16. Come with me. To 2 Timothy 3.16. You would not have a Bible without God. God inspired the Bible. Can uh, Jono come on live to talk to you? If Bob wants to come on live, he can talk. Here is the live stream there. If you want to come on. But we're going to go through a lot of material. So unless you've got some. So there's a live stream there if you want to come on. So let, let's let's look at it. 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The word inspiration means the open ustos. It means the word of God is inspired by God. Yes, God used writers, he used people, but we wouldn't have the word without God breathing into the word 
and making it his word. So it's not dependent upon man, it's dependent upon God. It's divine scripture. It's the divine word of God. So it's not dependent on man. So you've got the live stream there, if anybody wants to come on. That's the live stream, if anybody wants to come on. Okay. So you got the live stream there, and I've, I've given there, right? So we have creation it doesn't help us to get saved we needed revelation uh, we needed revelation right you shall not add to the word which i command you nor take anything from it that you may keep the commandments of the lord your god which i command you you're not to add anything or take away from the word of god meaning the word of god is the foundation it's the foundation Deuteronomy 29, 29, the secret things to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. So God has given a word that is to, to be there forever. John chapter 20, verse 30, 31, and truly Jesus did many of the signs of the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. These are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. So the scriptures were written that we may believe. The scriptures were written that we may believe. And what does Bob say? Because there are three things at play. You've got different translations. You've got different variations on translations. You've got textual variants. And you've got questions around canonicity. However, before I dig into that question, I want to explain something to the good man. Christianity is not dependent on the Bible. If you think that, then you don't know what you're talking about and your RE teacher failed you at school. Christianity is dependent upon the message of the church. Christi Christianity is dependent on the message of the church. The Christianity is not dependent on the message of the church. Christianity is dependent on the message of the Bible, which the church faithfully proclaims or should faithfully proclaim. There's a big difference. Yeah. Uh, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse 20, 21, we read, Knowing the first that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private inter interpretation, the prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20, 21, the Holy Spirit inspired the writers. The Holy Spirit inspired the writers. These are God-breathed Scripture. Jesus, uh, in Luke chapter 4, verse 17 uh, and verse 20, 21, and Jesus was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. He found the place where it was written in Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 to 2. Then he closed the book and he began to say to them, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Jesus built his ministry. Our Lord Jesus built his ministry on scripture. Not on tradition, not on a, just a message. It was built on scripture. John chapter 5, verse 46, 47. For if you believe Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? So here, the Lord is saying, Moses' writings is scripture and my words are scripture. And you're saying we're not built on scripture. It's crazy, man. Absolutely crazy. I, but I'm sorry, Bob's going to get buried tonight. I'm sorry, Bob, you're going to get buried tonight. It's not that I'm smarter than you. You're much smarter than me. But you're just not correct. You are not correct. You are not following what the Bible says. No, but the, the friend here says, uh, a friend here says there, Jesus never had the New Testament. No, Jesus' words were the New Testament. What Jesus said was recorded. His words were recorded. His deeds were recorded. 
But his words were recorded because they were the word of God. I don't know who Dr. John is. Hello. How are you doing? Um, I'm just going to cut off the, the actual background of the video. Uh, yeah, how are you doing, uh, Jason? Hey, uh, John, I, 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 have I met you at Speaker's Corner? Well, yeah, I would have no, I would have been known as Bloodfire for a very long time, and then I changed my oh, name. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're uh, on the same page, Bloodfire. Um, we are, yeah. So, I, yeah, I mean, I want to... So, so, I don't want to interrupt your whole stream. I'm not going to be here for long, but I just want to establish a few things. For a long time, I'd been working around Soko, and I'd gone to the pub with him various times. I've actually been a personal friend of Bob's, but I, I kind of noticed he was avoiding questions pertaining to matters of salvation. And he would yeah. constantly speak of things like solar scripture, the doctrines of faith, as if they were unnecessary things. He, if, if you look on the channel of Apologetics in London, I'm not here to, to sit for anybody's channel, but essentially my, uh, my second channel was Apologetics London. Uh, yeah, it's getting a, yeah. a massive views right now, but I'm doing live streams there as well. And in fact, I'd love you to come on, Jason, if you can. Uh, essentially, there, I've done a two-part video exposing the, the fallacious doctrine of ecumenism. Because in the park, specifically in the park for a long time, and I myself used to be an ecumenist, so I know what it feels like. Essentially, there was this uh, continuation of denying God's words and accepting the principles of Roman Catholicism and Eastern Orthodoxy yeah. within the church. Uh, yeah, within the church of Speaker's Corner, at least. What I noticed that is the fallacious re reason with Bob was he would uh, readily accept the doctrines of Rome. So he would say that do Rome is right, it could, it, when it concerns the papacy, when it co concerns the idea of marrying idolatry and stuff like this, but they're wrong about their ecclesiastical, ecclesiastical structure, their Marian dogmas, for example. He said he denied the Marian dogmas. Ask him specifically if it's the case that Rome is built on a three legged stool, the three legged stool of magisterium, uh, the uh, sorry, the the uh, scripture and the tradition, but oh. the, the Protestants or the true born, born again believers believe in scripture and and so well solely scripture but the tradition thereafter surely these two things conflict his his point was no they don't conflict like because you you can deny the papacy but hold on vatican II clearly makes it makes it very clear that if you deny the papacy you're outside of salvation this was a big yeah. problem for me because we have one structure saying no well the bible clearly saying that if you preach another gospel you're outside of salvation not that if you deny the papacy but because the bible doesn't teach the papacy Yet Bob, time and time again, was denying the biblical principles, and and this is a big problem I'm having with Bob. He he's been engaged in he's been engaged in sophistry. Now you mentioned earlier, I think it was that uh, Bob is like one of the wisest one that speaks cause. No, he isn't. I'm I'm just going to be honest. Doctor Bander is. If there's anybody in the park who's theologically led, who's born again, who's a Bible believing Christian, that's Doctor Bander. But because Bob for a long time has a bad voice because of JC and so called films. It so happens that he's been the only voice I've actually seen. I myself were duped to go into the corner because ultimately it was um, uh, to evangelize with Bob. And Bob yeah. has become this grandiose and big figure at the park. But he's not preaching Christianity. He's a heretic. And I want to make it 100% clear, this guy is not preaching Christianity. He's yeah. told me multiple times that Marian veneration is not a sin. And he's used passages in the Old Testament in regards to, like, the mercy seat, for example. And I've asked him questions pertaining to, well, if it's the case that, you, that God has given you this one sanction to pray to the mercy seat, right? If you believe that's the case, right, why is it that he mentions nowhere else that we can pray to any other saint? Or that you can pray to even Abraham? Why was it, a, it was never in the practice of the Jews to pray to yeah. Abraham or any other saint? Because this wasn't in the mindset of the early Jewish uh, thought. And it wasn't in the mindset of the early church either. Uh, the Bible makes it clear that anybody who preaches another gospel, let them be a curse. And this is what uh, Bob yeah. is doing. Uh, I, I could expound more on his, his uh, ecumenism. Like, uh, again, Eastern Orthodoxy, another one. He's, he's been constantly pandering to the ideas that we need a metropolitan structure within the church. The Benedict option that he constantly speaks about, like, this is from a Pope. This is a heretical idea that we must all commune in a, a sanctuary and, and basically leave the world. But the Bible says we must be around the world because we must preach the gospel mm. of truth for the elect. Again, the more I learned, the more I studied, the more I understood that these guys, all of them are heretics, including Kay. I'll say this openly. Kay, JC, Bob, and all of their, all of their acolytes, as long as they continue in this uh, fallacious uh, 
union with their or communion with them, they're essentially not saved. And that's my opinion. It wasn't my opinion a, a year ago, but it's my opinion now. Thanks yeah. for that, bro. Thank you. I, I am yeah. aware of uh, some of, like, I, I have no, I noticed a while, while back, like, I don't watch as much uh, Bob stuff these days, but uh, just a shout out, I have been on your channel. I have watched recently the last three or four months, your channel and our roles, and you, you're doing a good job. Excellent uh, stuff that you're doing, and our roles doing a good job as well. So just a shout out to you guys. But uh, mm -hmm. I did make that video ages back, if you remember, on Theistic Evolution. I pointed that out about Bob, that he wasn't correct there. And in the past, I've done videos talking about uh, his doctrine of hell doesn't believe in the doctrine of hell and i've tried to point people to that so pe pe people can go if you send me a link here now i can post it live and they can go and watch the live stream on ecumenic on bob and ecumenicism and stuff if you do that i'll put that up mm. and people can look at that uh, uh brother is yeah, that because, okay yeah yeah of course like look i mean i'm not here to take your time too much because obviously you've got to expound more on bob's fallacies but Essentially, yeah, it, it's just we ex we explained me and Nathan, where another brother who's, who's born again in the Lord, praise be to God. And I know I know you're born again. As yeah, well. and I, I have to um, say, uh, just a shout out to people that um, the brother here he's not trying to attack the people. He is is what he wants, and is he wants the truth, and he he wants people to be preaching the truth. And our brother here is saying, look, there are things that are just heretical that's not preaching the truth so he's not trying to attack the people he's just trying to show that on these certain doctrines that are fundamental they are basic doctrines there's no proper foundation and that, that's no what you're saying aren't you brother yeah because ultimately think about it i mean uh, essentially bob is claiming for example even when it comes to roman catholicism that essentially as unum sanctum says is unum, unum sanctum by the way is a 13th century paper ball it states that anybody who denies the Roman pr uh, primate is uh, anathema. Now, this is a strong term. It means accursed. Again, and Bob is presupposing that we can essentially uh, be in communion with heretics who believe in this. Marian veneration. Now, in both the camps of the Eastern Orthodox and the Roman Catholics, you see this continuous wave of prayers to saints, but also prayers to statues. They, they view the statues in their own canons as the images of God. Not, not necessarily God in themselves, but the images of God. And they claim they can venerate these statues because they become like mirrors to the divine. But the, the argument I would make is that God gives us no precedence in the New Testament and of, of even being able to worship any image or to reveal any images. Plus, there's no real image of Christ given to us. Imagine the apostles were out him. For years, they were around it for many years. They could have expounded on exactly what he looked like. They, they never did because they didn't want us to idol idolize a person or a figure. Instead, they wanted us to idolize God. Well, the son of man was a person. We don't deny that. Just like the father's a person, the spirit's a person. We don't deny that. But essentially, they wanted the, the, the biblical writers, the biblical authors wanted us to idolize the Trinity, the three persons, the one being of God. And that's the whole purpose of writing scripture so that we would know God, be in union with God and come to necessary salvation through him. Again, you, you mentioned actually earlier um, in regards to Bob denying the Bible. And yeah, he's done this multiple times. For example, he said something very fallacious in the uh, the little clip you brought up. The fact is that the, the, the church was before, the, no, sorry, the Bible the church was for the Bible. I would say, look, the, the fundamental principles of salvation are found in the Bible. The church adhered to those principles. The church, when it first started, was built upon these principles and they wrote those principles down so that every other church would fundamentally hold to those principles. So the Bible is necessary for every church thereafter. So you cannot say that the, the church can do without the Bible. No, it cannot. The church needs the Bible. Just as much as um, a uh, a uh, sick patient needs medicine, you you need what is yeah. medicinal for you because the word of God is a sharp sword dividing the soul and the the, the matter or the body. Essentially, you need scriptures, and the scriptures themselves are divine. We keep hearing these contradictions between uh, 
various churches came, we gave you that Bible. How do you know that Matthew wrote Matthew? How do you know that Paul wrote? I mean, first of all, I'd ask them how they know that because their canons don't mention how they know that. They just claim it's one, one tradition upon another tradition. But they don't claim how we know that. They just claim it was canonized at a later time. But th that's problematic. The, the thing is, the Bible is authoritative. If we take their idea of how we should establish a true canon, then essentially we should assume that the Orthodox Jews have the right canon and that therefore their Talmud is true because they hold the traditions that we do not have. And therefore we, we may as well presume that the Jesus we have was wrong, which is obviously not the case. So anytime these uh, heretics like Jay Dyer or Bob or any other camp claim that oh, they authoritatively give us the Bible, it's fallacious reasoning because the Bible is prior to any form of church governance, which comes much later. Um, I'm uh, going to get this thing. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> brother, I appreciate what you, all that you're saying. Um, if, you, if you want to, you, if you send me the link of your channel and any key videos, I'll, I'll post it here on where, where it's got Africa Without Borders. I can post it there so people can see it. You're welcome okay. to stay on. What I want to do, I want to just keep playing this clip of Bob and then just go through scripture and then later if you if you want to discuss church history we can do that as well so of you course. kind of give a little introduction to to some of the areas where I'm going to go but I want people to see uh in a minute as we listen to Bob again I just want to see what the Bible teaches about itself that you won't find anywhere in the Bible this idea that it's the message and not the Bible is the foundation nor the foundation is the word of God and we get the message from the word of God without the word of God we wouldn't know the message because the word of God as you said before is divine and so we need the divine scripture so you're welcome to stay on bro uh, mm -hmm. if you want to go it's up to you but I, if you let me just I'll, I'll go forward and then I'll stop and if you want to come in and say uh, say something you're welcome to do that is that okay because no I want I want them to have some knowledge of what the Bible says and not what Bob's saying this is Amen. what the Bible's saying about the Bible. You can't get this idea, what he's saying, anywhere uh, from the Bible. It's his own opinion. Mm. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Take okay, so we'll we'll play the clip. I've heard him go at length say this, but I'll play it again. Because there are three things at play. You've got different translations. You've got different variations on translations. You've got textual variants, and you've got questions around canonicity. However, before I dig into that question, I want to explain something to the good man. Christianity is not dependent on the Bible. If you think that, then you don't know what you're talking about, and your RE teacher failed you at school. Yes. Christianity is dependent Die. upon the message of the church. Die. And that message, ladies Good and gentlemen, you want to just stand there, bro. So that's the, 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 that's church, the clip. And, and you know, and I know, uh, we're not bringing that out of context. That's a summarizing of his, of his belief. And um, I just want to go to a few scripture. It says in Romans 15, 4, so if, 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 if the word of God is not a foundation, why would Paul say this in Romans 15, 4? For whatsoever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So Paul is saying the scriptures have given us hope, teaching us the way uh, to the Lord. Um, just... Uh, says in uh, Amos chapter 8, verse 11 and 12, it says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not of bread, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst of water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea, and from north to east. They shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, but shall not find it. So if we don't value scripture, God can judge the people, judge the church. And uh, it's a warning that if you take that kind of opinion where you, you, you despise the word of God, God won't send you preachers that will preach the word of God faithfully. 
1 Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 23, 25 says, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God which lives and abides forever. Because all flesh is of grass, and all the glory as the flower of the grass, the grass withers and its flowers fall away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. So the word of the Lord endures forever. So how can you say the church is the, the word of God is not a central plank, the central plank to, to our, our faith? That uh, we're even born again through the word. Uh, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through tradition? No. Through the church? No. Through the word of God. We're born again through the word because the word brings life. Uh, the word of God, which lives and abides forever. So uh, do you want to say anything there, bro? So, yeah, I'll just add, uh, yeah, and you, you're correcting your uh, claims there because obviously it's evident the word of God has power behind it, it is re revelatory, and that means we must adhere to it. Uh, I just want to read this. This is 2 Timothy 3.16. And so it says, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Again, uh, to just to establish, look, when we refer to scripture, we do refer to the Old Testament as well as the New. That's one thing. And the other thing is, this would mean all scripture, including the revelations of, of the apostles, are to be held as God-breathed. The word God-breathed is fiapnostas. Fiapnostas meaning God-breathed, or essentially... God inspired. Um, some translations say that anyway. So essentially, this is the word of God. Now, there is nothing that is equal to or can match the word of God. When God speaks, when his revelation comes upon earth, there is nothing equal to that because God is the first cause. He is primary. He is before all things and all things consist from him. So if, if all things consist from him, what is equal to him? Uh, man's tradition? Well, no, there's, there's no presence for man's tradition to come in later. Because God has made it clear, you write down my words, you write down my scripture, all throughout the Old Testament. You, yeah. you read uh, in Deuteronomy, for example, and there's many passages in there where God instructs Moses to write down what he's saying. He instructs, even in uh, Jeremiah, he instructs you to write down what he's saying. Because the written word is far more important than man's tradition because men often forget things. Men are fallacious. The Bible says there's nobody good, not one. The only one that is good is God. So if nobody's good, there is always open room for corruption. And I'd ask the person in the chat, Mr. Lester, if it's the case that the church was before the Bible, then essentially who established it? who established the church? What principles is that built upon? Because your church, your church believes that Matthew 16, 18 to 19 gets you the role of Peter. So you're already appealing to the Bible for your church. So in, in essence, you'd have to either deny Matthew 16, 18 or admit that your church is committing sort of scriptura by appealing to the Bible. This is the problem with your fallacious reasoning there. But essentially, yeah, like, as you said, Jason, look, look, the Bible is very clear. All scripture is God-breathed. And if it's God-breathed, it's God-inspired. There's no way to go around it. There's no church tradition that can go and uh, overthrow the doctrines of Christ. Amen, bro. So that was a key scripture, those people. You need to look at 2 Timothy 3.16. Theopanustos, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. God-breathed It's divine, as brother said. Uh, excellent there um, The next thing and, and it's important like you were saying It's important that I mean you've said it all but I'm just Reiterating what you've said Is that the quality Because uh, you, you touched on this The quality, I put uh, the brothers YouTube there And um, You have to forgive me A second uh, I'm trying to The link to the brother I don't. I, I don't know if I'm to call you Doctor Jono or 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 uh, Bloodfire, bro. <laughs> uh, Bloodfire is a dated name. Just just Jono. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Yeah. So so there's a link there on 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 the site on on the page, and then there's the so uh, on on comment section. Uh, I'm going to put my banner up now. Um. So the issue of quality. When when uh, people like bobby saying it's it's built on tradition it's built on the message of the church um and and not on on the bible the thing is like you're saying the bible the quality of the bible is it's it's divine it's divine so it's higher than tradition it, it, it's higher it's more it's it's higher than than the church the church's authority 
the church is not divine. The church is, is built on the divine scripture. So how can you say that, uh, we're, that we're, we're, we're dependent on the message and not on, on, the, uh, on, on the word of God when the word of God is divine? And the message, the message is protected. The message of who Jesus is, what Jesus did, is protected by divine scripture. If we didn't have divine scripture, we would... We wouldn't have that protection. We wouldn't be able to discern truth from error. You know, uh, Jesus said, our Lord said in John 17, 17, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. So our sanctification, our growing in Christ, is not based on tradition. It's based on the truth. And where's the truth? In God's word. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Jesus said in John 10, 35, the scripture cannot be broken. Um, when Jesus was tempted, in uh, can can you read it, Blue Five, for us? Have you got a Bible there? Could you read Matthew chapter four, verse one to eleven? And oh, when yeah. Jesus is battling with the devil, he's not using tradition; he's using the Word of God. Matthew chapter four, verse one to eleven. Would would you be so kind as to read it for us, bro? Yeah, no problem. Uh, one to eleven. Let me get up. Matthew 4, 1 to 11. And everybody notice Jesus is not using tradition to fight the devil. He's using yeah. the word of God. Okay, let's get this version, actually. Um, 4, 1 to 11. So this, this is what it says. Matthew 4, verse 1 to 11. Then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, uh, afterward he was hungry. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge of you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, the angels came and ministered to him. Amen. So our Lord is using scripture to deal with Satan. And Bob comes along and says, <laughs> it's just the message, not the word. And yet our Lord is saying, no, we need the word. Even the Lord is quoting the Old Testament to fight the devil. Um, I'll, I'll read a couple of more and then you can come in, uh, brother. Yeah, It says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 to 18, Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy but to fulfill. For surely I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. So the law is not saying, oh, it's just the message, not the word. He's saying, no, every word's going to be fulfilled. And then finally, Luke chapter 22, verse 37. For I say to you that this which is written must still be accomplished in me. And he was numbered with the transgressors for things concerning me have an end. Luke twenty-two thirty-seven. 37. So our Lord is quoting scripture, using scripture as the basis of his ministry. Nowhere, if you study the teaching of our Lord, nowhere is he using tradition as his bulwark, as his, as his foundation. The, he always using uh, the Old Testament and then the things that he says. But he, he's, he's never building or even saying the foundation is tradition or the message. He's always referring that his message his ministry, everything he's doing is coming from the Old Testament. And so his whole ministry is rooted in, in the word. So you'll not find this teaching that, oh, it's the message, not the word that's important from Jesus. Our Lord never, ever taught it. And in fact, if you do a study, I have uh, this book here. It's in inerrancy. If, if you can get it, brother, it'll be a, it'll be a help to you. Inerrancy by uh, Norman L. Geisler. And there's a chapter in here, Christ's view of Scripture. And you'll be shocked of all the Scriptures that our Lord quotes for his ministry. It's unbelievable. 
and you'll not find anywhere this idea where you never see our Lord coming up to the, the Pharisees or his people. You never see him coming up to the his disciples and say, hey, like, like Bob did, hey, uh, it's the message that's important. It's not the word. It's not the word of God. <laughs> that's not the foundation. Oh, and by the way, you, you're an idiot if you don't accept what I'm saying. Like Bob said, he's saying if you don't accept him, you're basically an idiot. You don't know anything. So, I mean, it's over a, to you, bro. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, what Jesus is saying? Yeah, of course, wrong. you're a hundred percent correct, brother. Uh, 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 yeah, you're absolutely correct. At the end of the day, look, uh, with Bob again, like if he wants to use the fallacious reasoning that like any appeal to scripture having sovereignty is is not good, or it's, it's you should go back to your re teacher, then what did you do with the various Anglican churches that teach the LGBTQ message and say the same things as him? By the way, that's essentially it's not the Bible that's true, but it's the, it's the message that's true. Essentially, oh that, that God is love and that's all that matters. He has the same ideology and the same spirit that the LGBTQ churches have. Uh, I just, I just want to read uh, this. This is Jesus Lord saying this uh, in the chat. Uh, so Psalm 119, verse 130, the unfolding of your word gives light. It's imparts understanding to the simple. Again, the, the word is sovereign, but it also gives us purity of doctrine. Again, how can we know what the early church teaches about it? I, I would uh, argue for any uh, uh, Catholics or Easterners in the chat, uh, can you show me where anywhere in your canons where you have the infallible, uh, infallibly, canonical words of jesus and the apostles are outside the biblical new testament you don't have that at all you, mm, good your, point, your good canons point. admit this you don't have this at all so if you don't have this you can't really claim that there was some extant tradition because there wasn't it was only <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it's very simple they don't have an extant That's tradition so they point, can't claim one. it's it's a it's a ridiculous concept they have in their minds uh, galatians 3 8 as jesus lord mentioned in the chat and the scripture for seeing that god would justify the gentiles by faith Preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, "In you shall all nations be blessed." Again, this, this scripture foresees God. This, this Jesus speaks about the scripture uh, foretelling of Him in John five. So it's evident the scripture has sovereignty. That's why Jesus mentions it, and Jesus assumes that they can interpret that scripture as well, because He says, "Like go to Moses, because He tells you about Me. He told you to go to the Old Testament and read it, because He's found in there." So again, this this idea and fallacious doctrine from the the papists and the Eastern Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox doesn't work, and it's contradictory. It's it's, con it's contradictory to everything that Bob is saying, to be honest. But yeah, I'll let you yeah. continue there, just. No, it's good. It's good what you said. I like what you said about <laughs> if you believe in the tradition of Jesus' words, can you show us <laughs> those infallible words outside the Gospels of the New Testament? I thought that was really good. It was really good, that bro. I, I liked it. I liked it. So we have the in the Old Testament we have the prophets there pointing to the Messiah. Um, we've looked at uh, what our Lord said about Scripture. He's not teaching tradition. He's not saying the Bible's not important. The Old Testament's not important. Tradition is important. No, he's saying no. You've got to go back to the Word of God. And he even chastises the Pharisees. Your traditions are distorting the Word of God. So he's actually attacking tradition because it's distorting the Word of God. They're, they're putting tradition. Uh, on par with scripture or above scripture in his time so we don't see anywhere our lord teaching anything like what bob is saying about the message is important and 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 not the word of god the new testament is based on the eyewitness of the apostles um just to say that the the apostles were chosen personally by christ we'll just go through quickly mark chapter 3 verse 13 and 19 they were eyewitnesses Acts chapter 1, verse 21, 26. They were given miraculous powers. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1 to 8. And they were given authority to exercise Christ's mission. Matthew 28, 18, 20. So the apostles and, and were given that authority as, as witnesses to the message and to who Christ is. But they were also given the authority to, to write scripture. So if you read for us, uh, brother... 2 Timothy, chapter 3, uh, sorry, 2 Peter, 2 Peter, chapter yep. 3, verse 15 and 16. And I'll let you commentate on this, the significance of this, why this is important about the importance of the New Testament as scripture. 2 Peter, so two, chapter 3, verse 15 to 16. No problem. Let's get this up. 
There we go. Uh, right. So this is um, so this is two Peter three fifteen to sixteen. And consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things, in which are some things hard to understand which untaught and unstable pe people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. So, so that is saying that Paul's letters are scripture, but it's equivalent to other scriptures like the, the prophets. So, <clears throat> you know, so if, if Paul's epistles in the New Testament is scripture, how can you say that it's not a foundation? Because... The New Testament is the apostolic witness of you. Talk, if Bob is saying about the message is important, yes, of course it is. The message is important; it's absolutely central. But that apostolic message is encoded, encapsulated in the the scriptures of the apostles or their associates. Like we know that Mark was based on Peter, Peter's eyewitness, because if you read. If you read uh, the style of Mark and you read Peter's letters, uh, Peter's uh, yeah, Peter's letters and Peter's sermons, it's a very similar style. So we know that we know that uh, Mark was rooted in Peter's testimony. We know that Luke gathered eyewitness testimony, and he talks about others. Books have been written, so he gathered. He, you know, he knew Paul, he, so he had apostolic witness there. Uh, Matthew was a, an eyewitness. Uh, John was an eyewitness. Uh, so the writings are based on 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 a message where people knew Jesus, they had access to Jesus, but it's encapsulated in these New Testament scriptures that message. And without without saying that Paul's letters are not the word of God, if you if you deny that, and you say uh, that's not important, uh, it, it, it's the message which really you're saying tradition is important. That's the main thing. What the church's tradition is. You're cutting yourself off, off, off. Uh, uh, you, you're jumping off uh, into a chasm uh, of darkness because you're, you're jumping away from the light of the New Testament scriptures, which is also rooted in the Old Testament. The old points to the new, and the new helps us to interpret the Old Testament. They're, they're together, and we need both of them. And so, to say we don't—they're not a foundation, but the message—it's a catastrophe, and and it's a heresy of the darkest darkest because it is satan actually attacking again as he did at the garden did god say to eve is satan again doing his old trick attacking the word of god that's all what bob is doing attacking the word of god and he's being used by satan to do that so you can come in brother if you want to say something so i'll just say this like and it's it's on topic but essentially Hello? Hello, bro, bro, blood fire. Are you okay? Are you still there? Uh, blood fire, I don't know. Just, just butt in when you come on. Like, I can't hear you. Can anybody hear blood fire? Because I can't hear you, bro. Oh yeah, yeah, you you cut out a bit. Sorry, it was on my side. You cut out oh, a bit. All right, sorry, so, bro. Go on. Yeah, sorry. So I'll, I'll go again. So, but essentially, the presupposition of uh, Bob's ecumenism is essentially what the Roman Catholic side way at all to what he's saying. But again, right, right. the reason why he's pushing for these kind of ecumenic doctrines and denying the Bible itself as the sole infallible rule of faith is to introduce Roman Catholic dogma and doctrines. Again, if if Uh, so you, yeah, it's cut out again. So, I'll, so basically, he's saying it's from a Catholic, yes. a Catholic angle. Yeah, it's it's but it's I'm essentially saying that the ecumenical efforts are from a Catholic angle. The the, the, the yeah. what he's doing, the presupposition what he's doing is to attack from a Catholic angle, so he can introduce Catholicism into the mindset of the the Protestant populace. 
and they'll accept it as palatable. It's like giving sugar with medicine. Like what there's so, there's some validity to what he's saying, right? For example, yes, there is a truth in the message, but it's that message is grounded out and meted out through scripture because scripture is literally all we have that tell us of what yeah, the, the yeah. apostles and the, the prophets were doing at that time and Jesus' infallible words. As it, even uh, right. Paul goes on to mention that he is inspired in Revelation, uh, sorry, not in Revelation, in 1 Corinthians 14. So, I mean, it's evident. Like, the scriptures themselves are inspired in the New Testament. Go on, what did, you, what did you want to say? Yeah, can, can I ask you a question? Because maybe you know this more than me. What I can't understand, brother, uh, Bloodfire, what I can't... what. Uh, no, it's Jono. not Bloodfire, it's Jono. Jono, yeah. Jono. Jono. Yeah. What I can't understand, Jono, is he's saying that it, the central thing is not the Bible, it's it's the message that's most important, the main thing. We're not founded on the Bible, we're founded on the message. Okay. But what I can't understand, brother, and maybe you can uh, enlighten us on this. Hmm. You're saying that it's from a Catholic background, and I, and I think that's probably the from the it's coming from a Catholic angle, and I and I and I would probably agree with you. The reason why I said probable because I've not. This is the issue now. Is whenever you ask him where you're coming from theologically, he doesn't say. Mm, has he yeah. ever said to you? Has he ever said to you in private or public or whenever? Has he ever said to you? Oh. Uh, brother, uh, John, I've been reading uh, Sir Thomas Aquinas, or I've been reading the Council of Trent, and I've been blessed by that. And you know, this is my view, uh, it's a Catholic view. Or does he just keep his cards to his chest and he just says, This is what it says, Christianity is this, and he just hides the fact that his sources that he gets uh, these ideas from, he hides them. What, hmm. Or, or has he been has he been open with you about this? So I mean, I, I've I've spoken to Bob uh, over the last three years. Obviously, as you know, I was sort of discipled on him to use the term loosely. But essentially, yeah, I mean, so from what he's told me, and this has actually been recorded on a channel called Mister Rax. In fact, uh, he told me he did disagree. So he told me he disagrees with uh, Sola Scriptura. He finds it inconsistent. When I asked him why, he said to me, show him in the Bible where Sola Scriptura is mentioned. Uh, I, I went on to explain it. He, he was having none of it. Like He just kept on talking over me, saying, show me where the Bible says this. And I said, that's not how Sola Scriptura works. It's not. It has to be in, found in the Bible, but it's the presuppositional uh, principle of God's word, is that God's word is sovereign. So therefore, by nature, it's held above any other form of tradition. That's just a fact. Every time God speaks, his words are, are sovereign. That's just a fact. It doesn't have to say it in the Bible for that to be a fact. <laughs> but essentially, like, yeah, like, I, I had been speaking. And there's other things as well. The Marian veneration. I spoke to him about that and he just tried to skirt the issue. But I came in, we shouldn't be divided. We should be connected. I remember one time I had a conversation with him at a pub. Uh, Kay was there as, as well. And essentially, he wanted to walk out because he was not having any of it. He, he, wouldn't, he wasn't willing to uh, have a decent discussion about these stuff. Like again, when I brought up Unum Sanctum, the papal bull from the 13th century, that literally outlines that anybody who denies uh, the papacy is essentially outside of salvation. Uh, he, he, he again just skirted the issue. He said, Look, these can still be brothers and sisters of Christ. And I said to him, How? When the starting presupposition is that the papacy is necessary for salvation, but we as Christians believe that's no, the doctrines of faith, the, 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 the biblical principles that are only found in the Bible are the ones necessary for salvation. You're telling us that something else is, we're, we're, we have two different religions. Uh, Marian veneration, um, even when it came to the dogmas, now Bob told me he didn't believe in the Marian dogmas, but when I asked him, like, does he believe that they should be dogmas? He said, yes. And he never re really gave a response as to why. So he, he's but, he's really good at running away from topics, in fact. Right, but, right. So so he, he's never, like, like if you ask me, yeah, uh, J uh, Jason... Uh, uh do you believe in the inspiration authority of bible i'll say yeah i believe in the inspiration why because the bible says it and then you you might say well is there anything like that you've read that's helped you i'll say yeah uh packers uh j.i packers fundamentalism and the word of god bb warfield author authority and inspiration uh and i'll rattle off various theologians herman bavink the Westminster Confession. I'll rattle off things. And you'll think, oh, right, I know where Jason's coming from now. 
So he's mm. never like giving you an indication like, oh, it, I know where he's coming from. He's just kept it here. He, he pretends like this is what I think Christianity but, is. But no, because, he hides his sources. Yeah, because it'll be contradict his position. Remember, like this guy's LARPing as an ecumenist. I do believe he's a Roman Catholic because, again, he holds the doctrines of Rome. That's evident. He denies right, Torah Scriptura. Right. He will openly attend these these uh, Roman churches, and he believes in transubstantiation. He believes in Mary veneration. He's come out and openly said these things. Again, but it'd be counterproductive if he came out and said, "Look, ultimately, yeah, I, I've read uh, Bishop Barron's works, or I've read the works of various the uh, works of Aquinas and stuff like that, and I've essentially accepted this position because one, he wouldn't get the following." or the donations that he receives now, right? And he does sh um, shill his patron and other stuff to other people so that they'll give him donations because he relies solely off of donations. I don't know whether anybody watching knows this, yeah. but that's what he relies off of. That's how he lives his life. And again, like yeah. the popularity of Soko is ultimately due to the fact that this a false fallacious idea of ecumenism has built up so much popularity that, that Romans, Catholics and Protestants can simply go to that channel and think they're one of the same yeah. community. This yeah, is how yeah, toxic yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, twisted it is. It really is a demonic doctrine. And I think it's worse than Islam. Because again, I, I, I do think it's, like it's, it's a remnant of market. Well, it's a remnant of beast, at least. It's a piece of the puzzle, really, that leads to uh, the, the final days. Because essentially what you have is this uh, beast, the papacy, trying to influence all people to join the church, whether subtly yeah. or not, and accept the doctrine of Islam, uh, basically through a sort of sp sugar spoon-fed kind of uh, ideology. For example, with a Protestant, all you have to do is if they're not they're not clued up on how the Bible works, or even about the history of Scripture, all you have to say is, well, "Where's your canon, bro?" And they can simply turn around and say, "Well, I, I don't know." And they will say, "Well, look, we have statues, we have all this beautiful stuff. Look at the gold arrayed ceilings, you know." <laughs> the Bible speaks yeah. about a whore in that same way. So, uh, so her, her room is arrayed with uh, different perfumes. Her bed is this way. And essentially, that's what Rome is. It's, it's filled with these uh, the incense, all of this stuff. And they can get that. And all Rome has to say is you can still be a Christian. You can still believe in all this stuff. Just believe in extra yeah. doctrines. Just believe in this stuff a little bit more. And this is really where Bob is trying to push with his ecumenism. I do think it's yeah. a psyop. I, I, I think it's far worse than I, I think people know yeah. about. Because Bob came out of nowhere. I don't know whether, like, obviously you, JC, would have known, but Bob came out of nowhere, JC came out of nowhere, and they garnered a lot of subscribers, a lot of traction due to this yeah, ideology, yeah. But, I, I, ideology of idolatry. But go on, what would yeah, you say? I, I think, uh, you know, uh, I, I think it, the what we're seeing at Speaker's Corner is, is endemic with evangelicalism as a whole these days. Because you have like inspiring philosophy and you have many of these famous apologists. And hmm. if you ask, if you ask, you know, do you believe in six day creation? They'll say no. They're, they're into theistic evolution. Do you believe in inerrancy? They'll start to wobble and say, uh, what do you mean by an inerrancy? Uh, um, and so some of the basic fundamentals, like, you know, we, we've talked about Calvinism and Arminianism and things like that, but th that's some uh, that's an in-house discussion with believers. They're, they're going outside that framework. They're going out, they're, they're, they're denying fundamentals. And mm -hmm. there's fundamentals being denied everywhere by these apologists. And, it, and it's not just a speaker's corner. They, they've imbibed it everywhere. But with Bob, uh, what 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 it exasperates me and 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 you've highlighted it again and i just want to say before i say this here the brother here right it has to be said because i don't want people going away and thinking that the brother here that john or brother john is bad mouthing bob is not because you can go to brother john o's channel and you can go to a rules channel and only last week i went on their channels and i was listening to your video on ecumenicalism and bob and you guys were not bad mouthing him you were just trying to show that that these are the doctrines that he's been teaching and they're just not biblical they're not and they're fundamentally corrupting the faith mm -hmm. and so this this brother here uh, brother jono is not trying to bad mouth um bob he's just wanting the truth he wants the word of god he wants to be the, the church to be preaching the 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 the, the gospel and sound uh, the sound faith 
uh, and that's all he wants. So please mm. don't anybody go away here today, tonight, and think the brother is just bad mouthing him. He's not. He's making a very important, valid point that if you're going to be a Bible teacher, an evangelist, a preacher, a pastor, or a public uh, apologist, you have to be sound in the faith. You have to be sound, and you can't be hiding these false doctrines and, and not telling us where you're getting these things from and hiding your sources and, and trying to hide your real agenda by hiding behind so-called ecumenicalism, mm. just trying to get everybody together on the basis of nothing, not on the basis of truth and, and hiding. And the brother here is, wants to, to bring that to light. And I think what you've done, what the video that you've done, the video Arrow's done, you know, the videos that you're doing, it, it, it is it's it's bold and it and it's needed what you what you've been doing brother so you know i appreciate that uh it needed it needs to be said and it's painful for people but through that you will find the truth don't listen just don't listen to the brother here don't listen to me if you can if you check the scripture and anything he says or i say or our rule says or the brothers that have been on, on the, their shows, if, if you can show that what they're saying is not scriptural, then fine. If you can say, Jason, you, you, you can't say what you're saying from scripture because here, here's a scripture that proves you're wrong. Or, or brother, brother John O, you're wrong because scripture says it here. Or uh, brother Arul, you're wrong, scripture says it here. Then fine. So check everything we're saying by scripture. Don't just listen to me. Don't just listen to the brother brothers go to the scripture that's all we're saying check the scripture and you'll find and and the brother here he, he'll be honest if i ask him where he stands here there and everywhere he'll be straight with me he won't hide it <laughs> we've had we've had some dues together me me and the, me and jono but he knows where i stand i know where he stands we're not gonna he's not gonna hide anything from me he's not gonna try and trick me pretend to be something he's not he'll be straight with me and if you're going to be a teacher and apologist, you have to be straight. You don't believe, if you don't believe in hell, tell us. Don't start hiding it. If you don't believe in an heresy of scripture, if you don't, if you, if you believe in uh, some quasi Catholic stuff about worshiping Mary, you have to be honest and tell us. And if you do, then we know where you stand and we won't stand with you because you're not standing on the fundamentals. But don't play games with us, don't try and hide things. And then say, oh, we're all one in Christ when we're not one in Christ because you're, you're holding to heretical teachings and things that are just not biblical. And one of the issues is mm. this issue of the Bible. I'm going to just play this, uh, uh, John, again. And then I'm going to just read some scripture. And then we'll talk about church history for a minute, if that's okay. We'll just do the church history. Nice. Right. Because there are three things at play. Just to remind you've people. You've got different translations. You've got different variations on translations. You've got textual variants. And you've got questions around canonicity. However, before I dig into that question, I want to explain something to the good man. Christianity is not dependent on the Bible. If you think that, then you don't know what you're talking about and your RE teacher failed you at school. Yes. Christianity is dependent Die. upon the message of the church. Die. And that message, ladies Good and gentlemen, you want to just stand there, bro? The, the message of the church, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. Amen. So, not amen to him, but amen to what we're saying. <laughs> uh, brother saying night temple. I have heard him say something like that as well. Uh, so, I'm just going to read a few more scriptures and then you can come in. And then, if we can talk about just church history for a minute, which we've already alluded to, you've alluded to, but I just want to go over that a little bit. So, the Bible is central. Uh, the Bible, we're to, read, we're, we're to read it reverently. God is speaking to us through the word of God. Christ has died for us, and we find that in Scripture. Luke 24, verse 25, 
and 27 and verse 32. So we're to read the scripture reverently. We're to read the scripture sincerely. God promises to bless those who seek him with all their hearts. Jeremiah 29, 13. We're to read scripture prayerfully. God promised to answer on his prayers. Matthew 6, 6. We're to read the scripture regularly. Regularly. God feeds our souls by his word. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. Just as we feed our bodies with food, we feed our hearts with scripture. When we read it, we are to believe what we read. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hebrews 11, 6. We're to practice what we read. God has promised, obey my voice and I will be your God. Jeremiah 7, 23. We're to understand what we read. Jesus said that we can only do this, do his will, when we know what it is. Matthew chapter 13 verse 19 to 23 so any thoughts about those scriptures or uh, what bob has said there just for a minute on those scriptures i want to get a few quotes and uh, feel free to talk for a minute oh yeah no problem so yeah like, like uh, it's already been established that the bible is the word of god and if it's the word of god is infallible is the is the root that gives us the ability to discern right and wrong good and evil these things are important essentially the church structure the idea of bishops and presbyters so you read philippians for example bishops and presbyters, presbyters uh and elders are mentioned we really only get this idea from the, one of the, what the earliest document we have which is the bible uh essentially we have no way of knowing or establishing what the bible is uh, sorry establishing right church doctrine and teaching without the actual uh one minute Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Slightly interrupted. Essentially, yeah, we've, we've got no way of, in, of uh, truly understanding the uh, idea of church structure or, or how the church is supposed to function without that. Again, yeah. the Bible gives us that form of how the structure of a church is to be established. Bishops, presbyters. Uh, again, there was a deaconess in Rome, for example. So all throughout, all throughout the New Testament is the idea of how the church is supposed to be structured. Uh, and again, like as I mentioned before, like, Bible is God breathed. So if the Bible is God breathed, there is essentially nothing above it. Uh, again, Bob wants to deny this, like uh, essentially most heretics in his uh, ideology, because essentially, if you deny that the Bible has any formative uh, infallibility, you can make changes to its uh, doctrines. Again, like Rome has done, like for example, adding mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. various things pertaining to, uh, let's say, the Old Testament, for example, with idolatry, adding yeah. verses there. Uh, so essentially, if they can do that, they can manipulate the word of God. And how can we understand what the word of God is? Uh, our earliest, and I'll, I'll get into the, uh, the actual history of the church later, but our earliest fragment uh, re regarding the uh, Bible is the Moratorian Canon. And that, that literally gives us, bar a few books, our canon, not, not the canons of Rome. Again, so it's a, this is another problem they have. But canons themselves, or canon lists, or disputations of canon lists, don't disrupt the fact that the the words themselves were infallible. Again, all the church yeah. was doing was discovering what was already there. That was it. We're, uh, we're, we're, it's good. It's good. We'll get to canonicity in a minute. I want I want to just read a couple of quotes and then we'll get into church history. Yeah? A couple okay. of quotes. We don't know who the writer of this is, but they wrote this and uh, just interesting. He says, the Bible contains the mind of God, the state of man, the way of salvation, the doom of sinners and the happiness of believers. Its doctrines are holy, its precepts are binding, its histories are true, its decisions are immutable. Read it to be wise, believe it to be safe, and practice it to be holy. It contains light to direct you, food to support you, and comfort to cheer you. It is the traveler's map, the pilgrim's staff, the staff, the pilot's compass, the soldier's sword, and the Christian's charter. Here paradise is restored, heaven opened, and the gates of hell disclosed. Christ is its grand object. Our good is its design, the glory of God is its end. It shall fill the memory, rule the heart, and guide the feet. Read it slowly, frequently, prayerfully. It is a mind of wealth, a paradise of glory, and a river of pleasure. It is given you in life and will be opened in the judgment and will remember and will be remembered forever. It involves the highest responsibility, will reward the greatest labor, and will condemn all who trifle with its sacred contents. What a quote. Wonderful. Charles, John Wesley said, I want to know one thing, the way to heaven. 
out to land safe on that happy shore. God himself has condescended to teach the way. For this very end, he came from heaven. He has written it down in a book. Oh, give me that book. Any price, give me the book of God. I have it. Here is knowledge enough for me. Let me be a man of one book. <laughs> wonderful. So, uh, yeah, absolutely wonderful. Uh, you've said some good things tonight, brother. Uh, I think uh, if we could round it off with a bit of church history. I'm going to recommend uh, some books. I recommend this book, Inerrancy by Norman L. Geisler. And it, it talks a lot about uh, scripture. It goes into the issue of the church and the Bible, uh, things that Bob has said. And it talks about Christ's view of scripture, the apostles' view of scripture. Um, Writers Norman Al Norman Geisler, Paul D. Figenberg, R.C. Sproul, uh, John H. Gressner, J.I. Packer, uh, Walter Kaiser, uh, Gleason Archer. It's very, very helpful. On the issue of, of nice. uh, canonicity and <clears throat> Catholic Church and, and the Bible, the Spirit and the Church, you can get this free on... Um, you get it free on monogism, I think, PDF, free. It's a Puritan paperback by John Owen, published by the Banner Truth, but you can get a free copy. And he goes into uh, the Bible, why the Bible's central, and about the Holy Spirit and the Bible, and how the Holy Spirit bears witness to the Bible, and it's very, very helpful. Um, there's this by Norman Geisler, From God to Us, How We Got Our Bible, published by Moody Press, uh, is very, very helpful. Um, I've also put some books down there. And any good systematic theology book that's Reformed or Evangelical, uh, Brother's Not Reformed, I don't think, but there's some good... Uh, there's um, uh, Wesleyan is uh, Wiley's Systematic Theology. Wesleyan, he did a, he's done... A, some good chapters on inspiration of the Bible. But um, this one by Dr. R. L. Raymond is an excellent one by Nelson, he's Presbyterian. And then read the, the Church of England, uh, 39 articles, Westminster Confession, and some of the great confessions of the church. And they all talk about the importance of scripture and it, it's above tradition. Um, but more importantly, is to study what the Lord says about scripture, the Lord Jesus. Because if you look at what he says, he says so much about this topic, uh, about the importance of Scripture and our Lord himself. So that's the main main one. So church history, brother. So I'm going to present an argument. And you've, you've, you've knocked it down a few times tonight, which has been good. But I'm going to present this argument. And then you come in and say, say what you say. Like, knock it down. Because this is what keeps coming up in the comments you have mentioned it before you have deconstructed it before but the main issue is well <clears throat> you know it's the church that created uh, the message it's the church that created the bible and so with you know it's it's the church that has the ultimate authority so that's why we need tradition that's why we need uh that's why we need the popes and his infallibility because um yeah, because it came through through the church. So <clears throat> the issue of canon, some people will say, uh, you've mentioned about canonicity, but they will say, uh, and, and it's something I know quite a bit about, so we'll go into that in just a minute. And they will say, as you've touched on, well, the canon that we have was created by the church. So how can the word of God be the main inspiration and the central thing the, the basis for the message when actually the church founded the scripture. Ah, yes, Sam. God bless you, Sam. You, you're welcome to come on, Sam, if you want to come on. And uh, God bless Sam. Uh, yeah, I do pray for you, Sam. I haven't talked to Sam for a while. So that, that's the stream there if you want to come on, Sam. So any thoughts about this? You've said you have touched upon this canonicity. I've got quite a few thoughts to give you to give people on this, but on this issue of canonicity, did the church create the canon? 
or and mm. the, the, this is the thing is did god create the canon amen well that's, uh, that's a good question i mean i want to read so i mean not of my own words but the words of john calvin the great theologian i want to read because i've got his institutes in my hand right now i want to read what he says about yeah. the the folly of these heretics thinking that they can determine what scripture is like and they can give us the canon what, what does he say here a most pernicious error has very generally prevailed viz that scripture is of importance only in so far as conceded to it by the suffrage of the church as if the eternal and inviolable truth of god could depend on the will of men with great insult to the holy spirit it is asked who can assure us that the scriptures proceeded from god who guarantee that they have come down safe and unimpaired to our times? Who persuade us that this book is to be received with reverence and that one expunged from the list did not the church regulate all these things with certainty? On the determination of a church, therefore, it said, depend both the reverence which is due to scripture and the books which are to be admitted uh, into the canon. Thus profane men, seeking under the pretext of the church to introduce unbridled tyranny, care not in what absurdities they entangle themselves and others, provided they exhort, extort from the simple this one acknowledgement, viz, that there is nothing which the church cannot do, but what is to become of miserable consciences, consciences in quest of some solid assurance of eternal life, if all the promises with regard to it have no better support than man's judgment. On being told so, will they cease to doubt and tremble? On the other hand, to what jeers of the wicked is our faith subjected to? Into how great suspicion is it brought with all, if believed to have, have only a precarious authority lent to it by the goodwill of men? Essentially, uh, John Calvin will go on and essentially claim that, look, Scripture itself is, is, is valid enough because it is the word of God. It's the inspired scriptures. When Jesus spoke, he didn't need the uh the moses seat to appeal for him he didn't need pharisees to appeal for his words uh when peter heard his words he didn't need to appeal to any other tradition or body of writing to determine what he was saying because he may have been speaking out of turn no um it's evident god assumes we have the ability to acknowledge his word that's the case that we have the ability to discern scriptures when it comes to canons again one of our earliest canons is the moratorium fragment it doesn't give that doesn't establish us all the canon, but it's, it establishes us the basis of what the canon, uh, canon is, and essentially as our earliest holy writ scriptures. But the, earliest, the scriptures, even before the time of, uh, let's say, papers, for example, the earliest representative claims it claims that Hebrews, sorry, that Rome, uh, sorry, not Rome, brain, that <laughs> Matthew wrote his gospel in Hebrews. It, well, well, he tells us this. But he tells us this according to tradition. That means there was tradition holding on to this. That means people knew of this before papers had even written down his words. So there was already a canon assumes because the canon is essentially the books that the church view as sound doctrine and as the fallible words of Jesus and the apostles. How do we get there? Well, the Bible says that the sheep hear his voice. Again, the, the various Gnostic script, scriptures tell us of a different Jesus, another gospel, essentially. The Gospel of Thomas, so Jesus that was uh, saw a cross that was ten feet tall and uh, was wasn't born of Mary, but was essentially uh, visioned out of like her spirit or something like that. Uh, the Evangelium of James, other other Gnostic Gospels again don't adhere to the Word of God. Our earliest scriptures, but our earliest scriptures give us the Bible. But essentially, when when the uh, when the uh, Catholics uh, uh, or the papers, you're, not, you're, not, you're on fire here. You're on fire, bro. Just hold he on is to be fair. <laughs> You're on fire. You can come in in a minute because you're saying a lot of good stuff and it is good, yeah? But I just want to say to our brother Sam, Sam, it's good to see you, bro. Mm. Yeah, it's good to see you too. Hi, hi by the way, Bloodfire. It's, oh, nice it's, to see it's, you, it's not Bloodfire anymore, it's Jono. Oh, sorry, you, you know what I meant, though. <laughs> yeah, 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 no problem, no problem. So um, it's, it's nice to see you, actually. So just hold that thought about... Uh, about the uh, situation, about all that you said there about the canonicity, uh, John uh, Brother Sam, uh, have yeah. you got anything to say? And then we'll get back to what uh, the brother was saying. Well, all about off. this issue about uh, this clip came from somewhere. <laughs> it came It came from me um, because, uh, to be honest, what I was doing last night, it sounds strange, but sometimes I play my Xbox to unwind after work. But I might listen to something in the background. And I think the title of that video is something like 
questions on Christianity or something. It was only like a couple of days old, so I thought I'd have a listen. And when I heard that, I thought I've got to send Jason that. <laughs> like uh, as soon as I heard it, because um, one, I just think it's wrong. It's just dead wrong anyway. But uh, I don't know. I just it, it, it is winding me up a bit. And I'd like to actually just quickly hear Bloodfire's opinion because, uh, sorry, Jono's opinion. So I'm so used to calling you Bloodfire. So if I slip the tongue, I'm sorry. Um, for <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, it's like uh, you and me kind of know Bob decently well. Yeah. And it does wind me up that like he's not called up on this stuff. Like, you know, because you can't, it's like, for example, recently I've noticed that when he defends the Trinity, he uses the essence energy distinction argument of the Orthodox Church. And that's fine if he wants to do that, right? I haven't got a qualm with him using that argument in the sense of if that's what he genuinely believes. But he palms it off as like, this is what all Christians believe. Nah, mate, you can't be doing that. You're not speaking for like your, yourself, Jono. You're not speaking for, say, Jason here. You're not speaking for me. You know, you're not speaking. You're not speaking for basically anyone who's kind of Catholic slash Protestant, because none of them hold to that doctrine anyway. You're just speaking for the Orthodox in this scenario, you know. And he needs to be pulled up on these points. He needs to stop trying to pigeonhole all these bits. Kind of, it's like he takes a bit of column A and a bit of column B and a bit of column C, smashes it all together, and says this is Christianity. And it's like, no, <laughs> you've got you've you've got to start distinguishing where these all different doctrines came from so because his statement last night is very much a sort of a catholic slash orthodox statement a catholic slash an orthodox <coughs> would, would mm, say that mm. statement um but a protestant would not hold to that statement is that fair to say no i don't think any protestant would hold to that statement so it's okay in my opinion if he holds to that if he personally holds to that that's fine but if but he can't keep palming this off as like this is what Christians believe. He can't do this anymore. Mm. And to add to the topic, it's like um, this idea of the church founded the scripture. I would more say the church identified the scripture rather than founded it. But also this idea of tradition. If you look at someone, say, like Irenaeus, he, um, he has a very famous quote in Against Heresies in Book 4, where he says, you know, for what if the apostles had left us no writings, would we know the gospel? And he says, for sure because we would have the apostolic teaching handed down through the apostles to the churches. Now, mm. I believe when he wrote this, this is true. When he wrote this in his time period, is this true today? No. This statement was true when Irenaeus wrote, wrote against heresies, because he's still quite early on, isn't he? He's, yeah. still, he's still relatively early on. So, I think his statement makes sense in the context of his time, but it doesn't make sense in the context of our time. So this well, idea, so the, I think there was a tradition in the very early days, in the very, very early days of Christianity, there was this kind of oral tradition that was handed down. But I don't think it, it really lasted very long. The scripture hmm. took, took precedence at some point. You know, I mean, like, just, just to actually add, like, so when it comes to tradition, for example, if you read against heresies chapter three, right, and that's often cited by papists, like again, it, of course, it says the the pillar of the church is the scriptures themselves. But he goes on to explain what those traditions were, and it's surprising. He doesn't mention the doctrines of Rome. He actually mentions that uh, the the curse of Adam and Eve, the uh, the, uh, the the fact that Jesus is God, all of this stuff. He actually mentions it and outlines it in uh, against heresies chapter three. Again, he's not mentioned any other tradition outside of that. So what is meant by traditions? Well, if you read the writings of John Chrysostom, when he mentioned tradition, it's, it's, it's actually hilarious because he's mentioning the, the, the tradition is practices. the gospel. The tradition is the gospel. That's what the it's, tradition Essentially, is. but when, when we look at... So there is Martin Kemnitz in his writings. Uh, on his, uh, he has a whole book on like the attacking the Council of Trent, essentially. And he will cite the fathers, essentially claiming that uh, there is about eight sources of tradition. But one of the sources is essentially... Um, the idea that this, not the scriptures themselves, but the liturgical practices. So, you know, the incense, what you should do during the service. This stuff is traditionally passed on because, again, how would you know? The Bible doesn't say, oh, you should, you should burn incense this way and then read a sermon from the, from the uh, thing, like, stuff like that. No, so no, no I, don't I, have I, that. I, I, I agree. That's where okay. John's, John Chrysostom's. I, I agree was. there. I agree yeah. there because, um, say, there's St. Basil and he mentions how, uh, 
you know scripture and tradition have the mm. same force but but he does actually go on to explain it he he mentions things like um how would we know that our churches have to face the east you know because they like them to face the east for the yeah. the rising of the sun you know how would we know to make the sign of the cross etc he lists off all these things um which so have obviously it's, it's, just been, just been passed down from one person to the next. It's but essentially these, liturgical but these, practices. But, yeah, yeah, but these things that he lists are not the gospel. They're more practices of the gospel, kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's yeah, why it's Jewish tradition. That's why that's why Chemnitz were going to say like there was eight forms of tradition. There wasn't just one form of tradition. And when the papers say there is, they're denying the historicity of the, the fathers again because the papers will often, often twist the fathers to their own destruction but, but anyway to to i think the more important part of this topic in my opinion uh jono <laughs> sorry i have to really think there um is that the reason why i say i sent jason that clip and i knew jason would do a little response because i i knew he wouldn't be able to help himself <laughs> um but no it, i mean that in a good way by the way jason um but anyways is because Bob needs to stop this mix and matching of Christianity. It, yeah, it pick has a mix to, Christianity. It has, yeah, it's it's a pick a mix Christianity. There needs to be there needs to be lines in the sand. There needs to be clear blue water. Who believes what, and who believes um, this at the other? It, what it a one question because, ben. because because, because yeah. Um, yeah. like at the end of the day, say like that. To be honest, Bob these days to me is sounding more and more and more like an Orthodox, like as in like Eastern sort of Orthodox. He's sounding more and more like that to me these days. And if he mm. is that, fine. I actually haven't got a problem with that. But don't palm this off as like everyone believes then the same thing if you'll say that, you know what I mean? I mean, here's the thing. Ben Ben did ask a good question. So this was well while he went obviously while he decided to leave uh, the, the corner and made his old video bashing us and bashing me and bashing J Jason. Respect, <laughs> Those were the days. <laughs> yes, he, he essentially made a good point. Like, if if Bob is going to deny that the scriptures are infallible, they're the so infallible rule of faith, like the Protestants do, then essentially, which apostolic tradition is he holding to? If he if he accepts any apostolic tradition or any part of it, he has to deny the others. So it, essentially. His ecumenism fails from the start. The presupposition is that essentially all these churches are saved, but they're not because they have different views and even at absolute tradition. For example, the, uh, the Easterners do not claim that as a papacy, they think it's a heresy. They don't believe that the church has jurisdiction. Have, Sorry, the Pope has patriarchs, jurisdiction. They have patriarchs, don't they? They have patriarchs. They have patriarchs, but they do not have... I don't, a, really, uh, I don't really know much about the Eastern Orthodox, to be very honest. They only yeah, know they, they have Christology so they have more than the anything. the patriarchs, who are essentially the metropolitan. Then they have uh, the bishops and the deacons and stuff like that. They they believe they believe that Peter was first amongst equals, but they do not believe that the the Pope of Rome has jurisdiction over the entire body of the church, and they deny Rome as the the head of the papacy. They do believe there was popes and patriarchs in the early church because there was, but how the how the early church viewed the papacy was in response to various heresies. They never viewed the papacy as something that can infallibly the divine doctrine and teaching of what the Bible says. That's why Gregory the Gate will later state in um, the fifth century that any man that considers himself the head of the church is the Antichrist, because ultimately it makes sense if you're coming from the same lure of those people. This is why I mentioned to Ben, by the way, he still hasn't gone back to me on that one. <laughs> uh, be that as it may, anyway. uh, 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 let, let's yeah. leave Ben out of here a bit. <laughs> I, I wanna, I wanna, um, I'm not talking about him, even if he's not here. Uh, John, I, I want to just come back to church history and the canon and things about this idea that it's the church created the scripture. I want to recommend a book. It's very helpful. It's by Andre J. Kostenberger and Michael Kruger, um, and it's called The Heresy. I have Orthodox. that book. I have that Pardon? book, actually. I have that book, actually. Yeah, it's a very good. It's by Crossway. And yeah. basically, there's been a lot of studies over the years on the issue of covenant and scripture. And the thing is, when, when you think about... I will have to go Old, in a bit, by the way. I'm just interrupting because right. I've got... But when you think about the Old it. Testament, it's given in the context of the covenant. You know, like Jeremiah talks about the, the new covenant and, and Jesus, our Lord, when he's, he's doing uh, the break of the bread, he talks about the new covenant. So when, when a covenant's given, there has, it has to be ratified by, the, by a word. So God gives his word as a ratification of his old covenant, the the cover in the Old Testament. So when the when the apostles when when our Lord came and and was preaching and teaching, by definition, the Jews of that time 
when they knew the Messiah had come, they, they would instinctively know that if the Messiah is coming, it's, a, it's going to be a new covenant and it's going to have to be ratified with Scripture. And you see that in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 and 16, where you can see this idea that that Scripture is, all, is already like Paul's epistles are Scripture. And it's because of this issue of the covenant. Because where there's a covenant, there has to be the ratification of Scripture. It has to be ratified by God's, God giving his word. So you read 2 Peter 3, 15, 16. Also, our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, was written to you, as also in his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which those who are untaught and unstable twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of Scripture. So already Peter is saying within the, at that time, there was already a canon of the New Testament. One example is Paul's epistles. You see, because the mentality would be that, right, we've had the old covenant. Now the Messiah's here. Uh, the old covenant had scripture because God ratifies his word in the in the ancient world. When, when, a, when an emperor came to a, a nation and destroyed it and took over it, he would give a covenant and it, the covenant would have to be ratified in blood. But it, it was also given on a tablet that the emperor would give his word that he would do certain things for that culture, for that for that nation that's been taken over. You see that in the Old Testament. The Lord gives the Ten Commandments. You know, you see the blood, the sacrifice. And he, and he ratifies the covenant with his word. So when our Lord comes, the Messiah, there was already this inbuilt idea that there would have to be scripture in the new covenant. It's a new covenant. You see, you recognize well, that early on in the church, though, don't you? Like if you read people like Clement, Polycarp, Ignatius and yeah. Mar and Justin Martyr and Irenaeus as well, all the early ones, you notice very quickly that they're actually all quoting basically the same books. Like you do yeah. get a couple of them who, who quote, say, the apocryphal books, but those are more Old Testament based rather than New Testament based. But in terms of the New Testament, they're all quoting the same things, really, like yeah like yeah, yeah. um there's a consistency amongst them like they all don't quote exactly the same books like for example polycarp will quote some slightly different letters of paul to say clement does but you notice that they recognize paul's writings as authoritative that's the thing that you notice the, 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 the yeah, so I, I just want to i just want to address this before i go because like obviously i have to go literally i didn't realize how late it was but essentially yeah like just to add on to my point i made earlier um Again, like quoting Calvin and his institutes, that gives us no New Testament grounds for any sort of uh, infallibly guided. You've gone uh, soft on Calvin, Jono. <laughs> I, 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 I appreciate Calvin. I mean, I, I've never really not appreciated Calvin. I think it was just a that, process that, of that, 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 That's a lie. You used to hate John Calvin once upon a time. <laughs> no, I didn't. I don't, well, I don't think I've ever hated him. <laughs> Hate is a strong word. I don't think I've ever hated anybody. Okay, but... I'll rephrase it. You disliked him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I did because I didn't understand it. Again, like when when you grow in faith and truly come to, and the yeah, Bible yeah. says, that I'm just, I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing you. By the way, go on, move on. <laughs> right. So, I, just to anyway, just to address my point, that I was saying, essentially, look, when we read Calvin and when we read other experts, not even counting Mar Martin Kevnitz, for example, the Lutheran theologian who comes later than Martin Luther himself, if we just expound his scriptures, again, we get this idea that the fathers themselves just taught a two-source ver version of tradition. Tra tradition itself wasn't a scripture alone. It was it was essentially a tradition of liturgical practices or things done in the church body or church life, for example, as uh, the brother Sam has mentioned, the, or I've mentioned the various liturgical practices and stuff like that. Again, these things are done as a, uh, a form of practice within the church, but they're not things that are necessary for salvation. Whereas the scriptures, if you read mature, mature sorry, moratorium fragment and stuff like that, we have the expounded body of scriptures before there is an e e even a council on what the scriptures are. For example, the Roman Catholics will mention the, the council of Rome in 391. And I would just simply ask them, well, where was the scriptures before that? Es es essentially, the, the, the church discovered the scriptures, not the other way around. But the, the scriptures have always been there, as uh, the brother has mentioned. But I'm, I'm going to go essentially now, All right, so I'll, I'll let, let me, you continue. Let me. But let me anyway, uh, God bless. God bless you, John. Take it. Nice to see you, John. God bless you. What What I was trying to say is that before church history begins, after the apostles, there's already this foundation of 
Old Testament, New Testament covenant. And you can see that in the quotations of the early church fathers. They understood Old Testament, New Testament covenant. And by definition, there was already then inbuilt underneath that the idea of scripture because of the idea of covenant or the New Testament covenant. But the reason why we believe scripture, the, the Westminster Confession, Calvin and the and uh, the 1689 Baptist Confession, they were very, they, they'd read a lot of philosophy. And because they read a lot of philosophy, they were very good on epistemology. <laughs> yeah, they were very good on epistemology. And they realized that if you have an ethereal knowledge, if it's based on man in any way, it's limited, it's finite. And so you couldn't really have a faith that's got certainty because it's based on man, man's finite. So they realized that if we're going to have certainty about knowledge of God, it has to be rooted in the nature of who God is. And so therefore you find that in the scripture. So it, it's a very important, fundamental, basic thing in, in epistemology that, that our knowledge uh, ultimately comes from an infinite mind, which is in the scripture, you see. And so they, they were very wise about philosophy and they realized that if they, if they, if they linked the faith in, to uh, church history, tradition, a pope, they, they were gonna they were gonna hit some problems in epistemology. But if they founded it in the scripture, they were on a rock solid basis for epistemology or the theory of knowledge. And that's why they they talk about it's not the church. They make it very clear. Evidences are important to prove the Bible, but our faith is not rooted in in just evidences. It's rooted in the testimony of God. And they make it clear that the Holy Spirit testifies to the word that it's the word of God. Because if it was just based on evidences, and, and, and that was the foundation, like, from reason, it means, like, let's say, you know, I'm a 12-year-old a guy, 12-year-old boy, and I walk through a university, <laughs> and a professor in theology is attacking the Bible and saying the Bible's wrong and he's giving loads of evidence. If it's just based on evidence, that boy's faith could be, get turned over. But if God's testifying to that boy, <laughs> that scripture is scripture. <laughs> he Peter, can stand you against need, the professors. You need, re you need a reason for the hope that lies within. Let's put it that way. Yeah, you, know, you, um, you, 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 do need you need a reason, but the... I think he's froze. I hope not. No, no, he hasn't froze. Yeah, We're you, all right. you, you need. <laughs> I'm not saying you don't need evidence, and the, the the Westminster Confession is saying that you don't need evidence. But that, ev sorry, but that evidence, the first line of defense, the first testimony is God Himself. That's the point. I know exactly. But also, if you look, if you look at church history, I will not claim that. The earliest church fathers were like so the scripture in the way that the reformers were i think that's a different context but i do think that um they placed the scripture above the tradition but the tradition for the early church fathers was still very important oh, like yeah. irenaeus like like irenaeus points out you know um so i won't i won't claim that they're solo scripture in the way that the reformers were but would but, I claim that scripture was yeah, yeah. extremely important to them and it did take precedence in a sense? Yes, I would yeah. say that. Because but, um, because all their arguments, you look at Irenaeus for argument's sake, when he's uh, refuting the Gnostics, he's made, the bulk of his argument is scriptural based. I would say probably two sort of two thirds of his arguments, maybe three quarters, is scriptural based against the Gnostics. And then say be the last third or maybe last quarter is a bit more tradition based. You know, like um but that's a bit telling that the bulk of his reputation or recitation is uh, scriptural based rather than based on uh the tradition of men, so to speak. I uh, I understand what you're saying, but ultimately God's God's the in control of history. No, no I'm, I agree with that, of course. You know, he's in control of history. <laughs> and so, because he's in control of history, he's guiding the church through providence, through his work in history, but also by the Holy Spirit. So think, it was not, it was not a council. The... It wasn't a council that said, this is the Bible, that's the Bible, this is the Bible. 
the reason why we have the Bible, the reason why you can look at history and say there's this bit of history, the moratorium fragment, this, that, and the other. But the reason why, the reason what Calvin and the, the reformers were saying is the reason we have a Bible is because God testified to the church via the Holy Spirit through his word, and they had to accept what God was testifying to I, yeah, so oh, yeah, I the good bishops that. and the councils they couldn't just come and say they couldn't just come and say oh uh, by the way this is scripture that's not scripture they had to accept it because of what god was using what god was doing and that's the point if it was based on the church saying this is scripture that's scripture your faith would be based on the church i, I agree like, I, think, I think i think the um the Baptist Confession, and to be fair, the Westminster Confession says exactly the same thing. I think they put it best. Where if you look at Holy, the first section, Holy Scripture, you know, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to read one little section of it. Um, it what, just says what section is it? the first section. I'm just skipping the first paragraph per se. Yeah, yeah. But it says, um, therefore, it pleased the Lord at sundry times and in driver's manners different ways to reveal himself and to declare his will to his church and afterwards for the better preserving and propagating of the truth and therefore more sure establish the comfort of the church protecting it against corruption of the flesh and the malice of satan of the world it pleased the lord to commit his truth wholly to writing therefore the holy scripture is most necessary for those former ways which god revealed himself and uh, revealed his will unto us his people having now ceased I think I think the that that puts it best. That's basically what you, that was basically what you were trying to say, Jason. You know the um, the idea that God has put down the Scripture to guide us now. That's our guidance, and um, and yeah, like it like it says, the Lord put it wholly into writing for our benefit. The Scriptures for our benefit. It's not for God's benefit. It's for our benefit. For like it says in uh, two Timothy three sixteen, you know, not the but. Not the part particularly where it says all scripture is inspired by God, but where it goes on to say, you know, it's profitable for, for doctrine, for reproof and teaching in righteousness, that the man of God may be equipped for every good work. A lot of people will point out that Paul is speaking about the Old Testament, and yes, he is, but his point is still valid, you know, like what, what he's saying there, that um, scripture is, that is what scripture is, it's our teacher and it is a, and also it's our guide, like because everything we need to know about God is in the Bible. So you know, and every and everything God wants us to know about Him is in the Bible as well. So, like for example, when you've got something like Vatican One, and I, I'm not sure if it was Vatican One, it might have been a bit before, and they say you know Mary was uh, assumed into heaven, like bought the body assumption of Mary or something, something something like that. Um, how is that from God? Where did you get that from? Because that's nowhere yeah. to be found in Scripture. You know, um, everything that God wanted us to know and needs us to know i think that's the other important part needs us to know yeah yeah is yeah. is in the bible that's a good point that that's one of the things that i'm glad you brought that at the end that everything that we need to know for for salvation and godliness is a good point uh is in the scripture so brother you sent me this video clip i couldn't resist well, this is down to you today <laughs> and you knew resist. me you knew me like, uh, like but, but also, but also, but, but, but also, Jason, when you agree that what well, I felt like that wasn't a statement he should get away with, I, it, it, it grieved my heart, brother. When, when I listened to it, I've heard him say things like that, but here it came out very, very clear what he was he's, saying. He's, he's kind of flirted with that in the past, but yeah, that's yeah. the most, but that's the most clear where he's basically gone. Yeah, yeah, the Christian it faith doesn't me, need the Bible. Sam, it really grieved me, bro. It really grieved me. I'm just going to play it again. This is what we're reacting to today. Those I tried to hide, I hide your name. I didn't want to show your name. Oh, no, it's fine. Bob, Bob, Bob knows I've got it in for him, so it's fine. It's, right. and, and, FYI, and, and FYI, not JC, just Bob. Just Bob. I haven't got it in for JC, just Bob. All right. Let's go here. Let's go. Because there are three things at play. You've got different translations. You've got different variations on translations you've got textual variants and you've got questions around canonicity however before i dig into that question 
I want to explain something to the good man. Christianity is not dependent on the Bible. If you think that, then you don't know what you're talking about and your RE teacher failed you at school. That line there, your RE teacher failed you at school. Upon the message of the church. And that message, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to just stand there, bro. So it's nice not it's prayer. not the Bible, it's the message of the church. You know, I, I don't know if you've ever, ever read anything about, uh, I know we talked about Catholicism um, quite a bit in church history, but uh, there's a, I, I don't know if you've read anything about Karl Barth and M. I I don't even know, I don't even know the name to be, I'll be honest there, mate. But in the, in the, the 1920s, 30s, uh, there was these theologians called Karl Barth and they're called neo-orthodox. They were neo-orthodox. They kind of were reading John Calvin and Reformed theology, but they, they didn't believe in inerrancy or the inspiration of the Bible. And their mantra was, it's the message that's important, not the words. So the words of, of God, the words, it's, it's not important. It's the message. And so when you read the Bible, it's not every word inspired. It only becomes inspired, the bits that you read, when you feel it kind of gingers you, then it, it's inspired. But the, the mantra was, the message is important, not the words. And you can see that that's, that's even that kind of neo-Orthodox kind of thing, but also the catholic -y kind of thing, is even amongst evangelicals today. It's, it's crept in to evangelicals. And Bob is bringing this in, is bringing it in, uh, in a Trojan horse because of the issue that you were saying, and we've said this all night, is that it's just not being open properly. Where he's getting his sources from, where he actually, where the clear, where the blue water is in his theology, where does he really actually stand? So he'll say, oh, this is Christianity. The Bible is not the central thing. It's the message. This is Christianity. Rather than being honest and say, well, I got this from Vatican II or Vatican wherever, or I got this from reading Sir Thomas Aquinas or, you know, or whatever your source is, is not being honest. So, No, I agree. And, but also, like I say, this, it, the thing that's griping me the most is, say, for example, there's a guy in Speaker's Corner um, called Phil. Uh, I don't have a second name. I just know him as Phil. And... Um, He's a he's a Catholic evangelist, like a bit like me and Ben used to be, and um, he goes there, and he debates all comers. Doesn't matter who they are, whether they're atheist, whether they're Muslim or Protestants. He doesn't care, you know. He just debates anyone. But what, say I respect him more than I respect Bob, and here's why: Phil's a Catholic. He's open about the fact he's a Catholic. He's also a genuinely nice guy. But the point is, he doesn't pretend like he's kind of in fellowship with everyone you know yeah he's, yeah he's nice to everyone he's nice to everyone like he's a legitly very nice guy but he doesn't pretend like he's in fellowship with everyone whereas bob tries to pretend like he is he's, and he's, he's honest and... where he's honest where he where he is he's not he's not like saying oh i'm following christianity but he's just, he's hiding his catholicism he's being <laughs> honest even though we disagree with it he's being honest with it and yeah and also i can't hate him he's a lovely guy but the point is is like bob will pretend like he i've noticed bob uses the essence energy distinction as an argument for the trinity right that's fine in the sense of if he's an orthodox and he believes that right in it from, on, on a personal standpoint in regards to bob but you can't make statements like we christians believe in the essence and the energies of god no, not we Christians. The Orthodox believe that. Make that distinction, Bob. The Catholics don't even believe that. The Protestants sure as heck don't believe that. Only the Orthodox believe this. Like, just, just the Orthodox. Just please make that distinction. Stop pretending like you're speaking for all Christians because you're not. Mm. Just, 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 just have a bit of humility and just admit that this is your personal theology. If it's your personal theology, that's fine. That's fine, but just stop pretending like you're speaking for all of us, and that's my biggest gripe. Well, it's important that you're saying it, and it's important that uh, John always said it and others have said it, because the reason being, when I went to UK recently, um, and I've been to UK a couple of times, 
people come up to me not not as big as corner but they'll come up to me in manchester they'll come up to me wherever i am and they'll say oh uh, bob said this or uh, I was down at Speaker's Corner. I saw Bob, and and everybody's like everybody I see. They 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 say good things about Bob, and 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 they they kind of think that he's evangelical. <laughs> they kind of think far he's far from it. He's far from preaching it. <laughs> like the gospel. And I'm thinking, and and so people have been deceived. A lot of people have been deceived. They they they've because he uses the word Christianity. I'm teaching Christianity. A lot of people. Uh, are obviously my sister here uh, michelle is god bless you sister michelle but a lot of, she's checked everything with scripture but a lot of people they just hear what he's saying and then they say oh that's christianity essence distinction that's christianity no it's not it's a particular it's all it's like eastern, eastern orthodox Orth eastern orthodox yeah yeah so uh, people are deceived a lot of people are deceived uh, and so Already. everything we're saying tonight everything we've said like I said, we're not we're not we're not trying to like gripe at a person. Anything we say, if it, if it can't be backed up in scripture, then don't don't listen to us. All we're saying is just be honest, just be clear about where you stand, and, and, even, and that's what and we're even saying. If he, and, and even be if, sound as well. And even if Bob is really in theological no man's land, where he is just kind of cherry picking little things even if that is actually what he's doing can he just start saying something like my personal belief or something like that can he can he start saying something like that and stop pretending like he's speaking for people like you me Jono, or whoever you know that's the biggest thing i want him to start doing i want him to stop pretending like he speaks for us all because he just he just doesn't like that that side of it has to stop because also there are some like i'm not sure if you ever look in the comments section uh oh you're still there jace <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> not sure is he still there i think he might have cut out it does happen to him sometimes Anyways, I'm going to assume he's cut out, so God bless everyone. Sorry, guys, it went off then. Uh, Sam, can you come back on, bro? Sorry, brother, it, the, the, the link went. Uh, so, Sam, I don't know if you can come back on. The, the link went, uh, it, the internet went down for a minute. It's, it's come back on. So, Sam, I don't know if you can come back on, brother. Uh, the link is here. Can, I, can anybody hear me? I'm just coming on just for a minute. Okay, can anybody hear me? Can you let us know? Uh, th there's the link, Sam. Sorry about that. So Sam sent me the video clip. Uh, and that's what we've done today. I hope it's been a blessing. I'll give you a, a shout out. Uh, the Spirit in the Church by John Owen is very helpful about the importance of Scripture. And it talks about the role of the Holy Spirit and the church and in relation to scripture. Very, very excellent. Um, 
Inerrancy. Inerrancy, thank you, uh, Michelle. Inerrancy by Norman L. Giesler. He's got R.C. Sproul in an excellent, excellent book. Um, from God to Us, how we got our Bible by Giesler and William E. Nix. Very helpful. Uh, Andres J. Kostenberger, The Heresy of Orthodoxy uh by michael j kruger uh crossway okay excellent book this covers uh the canon of scripture and how it was god that chose the his scripture not man uh systematic theology by rl raymond goes a lot about scripture uh published by nelson uh New Systematic Theology uh, by Robert L. Raymond. Extra, e excellent, excellent. Uh, a modern exposition of the 1689 is good about scripture. Okay. So those are some things that you can look at. And uh, I hope that uh, that's a blessing to you. Hope that's an encouragement to you. In all of this, I would encourage you to read this book by John Owen. Get a copy of it, a Puritan paperback by John Owen, and get hold of it. Um, on all that we've been talking, the issue about Bob and the attack of the Bible, um, get hold of it. If you want to learn about church history, the guys have quoted Irenaeus and various people like that. Uh, this is an excellent article. It goes into it very well about, it's quite deep. It goes into church history there. Okay, so you can get that. Uh, those who want to study church history and how the church fathers viewed scripture, it's a very, very good article. And uh, check out our website, Africa Without Borders, and check out PayPal. And you want to uh, encourage us. Yeah, it is sad, Michelle, attacking God's word. Um, it is sad, sister, you know. It's very, very sad. Um, I didn't really want to make the video, to be honest, but it, it, it grieved me when uh, when Sam sent me the clip. He sent me the clip. And it grieved me. So I recommend this. This is excellent. The spirit and the church. What a it's spiritual. How do Christians come to the certainty that the Bible is the word of God and gain an understanding of his mind and will from it? How do they acquire the ability to pray and lead others in prayer? How are they comforted and supported in all the difficulties they've met? How can the church be led, taught, and guided aright when Christ is not here on earth? According to the great Puritan leader, John Owen, the answer to all these questions is the same by the gracious and powerful work of the Holy Spirit. He is, it is who convinces, assures, teaches, comforts, and equips the church and all its members for the work they are called to do. In an age when many think Christianity is nothing more than effort based on fallible human conclusion, Owen calls the church back to divine certainty and divine resources. So it's about how the Holy Spirit bears witness to the word of God. And it's very, very good. It's excellent. I'd encourage you to get hold of that. John Owen, Puritan paperback, a bridge made easy by R.J. Law. It will bless you. It will encourage you. It will strengthen you. Please get hold of it. Get a copy of it and read it. Either get your Banner of Truth copy he either ordered the Banner Truth copy. Look at it, it's beautiful. It looks really nice, the book, but it, it, it's so spiritual, this. It's so it's such a spiritual book. It's really edifying. It's easy reading, it's edifying, but it's full of scripture. It's full of scripture. And it's so wise and it so builds you up. It just builds you up and it just strengthens your faith. It just strengthens. And then there's some others there by John Owen. 
you can get edit edition the glory of christ the communion with god the apostasy from the gospel these edited puritan paperbacks are excellent you know i've got some here another puritan paperback precious remedies against satan's devices by thomas brooks banner of truth excellent excellent will really really bless you uh, all things for good by thomas watson puritan paperback excellent excellent samuel rutherford letters of samuel rutherford uh excellent puritan paperback excellent well excellent and then learning in christ school puritan paperback ralph venning excellent you know so i i've got no nothing against uh bob personally i've got nothing against uh so-called jc i like jc uh jc is a great guy a nice, a nice guy um but i did the video because it's is complete error to say that the bible is not the central thing that it's just the message not the word of god that that's not a good thing to say it's a heretical thing and people needed to be challenged these are the guys have come on they know bob very very well more than me and they're giving other issues that this ecumenicalism and things like that so all i want is you go to the word that you study the bible you study the word of god that's the main thing it's not what i say it's not what the guys who came on here say i don't care what they say i don't care what i say all that matters is what god says what what his word says you know so yeah order, order yourself a copy of uh john owen's book spirit and the church puritan paperback john owen and uh, you're going to be blessed you're going to be encouraged yeah yeah i think sam has has started to read uh last year john calvin's institutes and he started to study 1689 baptist confession so sam's moved a, a, a long way from catholicism now he's i haven't talked to sam for a, a while uh, but uh, i know that he's moved away from catholicism and he's he's been reading um studying the 1689 baptist reading john calvin's institutes and he's been reading reform things but it has to also be practical as it hitting practically i don't know sam <laughs> so sam you're here <laughs> you're welcome to still come on i'm going to close in prayer bro oh sam simone Sam Shimon's off the chart, bro, isn't he, Michelle? He's, he's a goner, isn't he? He's just like all over the place. The live stream's there. But Sam Shimon is, is, is gone. He's totally gone. I'm sorry I lost you, Sam. The internet went down for a minute when you were on. So, Sam, you got me to do this. I'm, I'm over two hours and sam is to blame for my two hour live stream on bob the builder and uh i bet i bet when sam you sent me that video i bet you thought <laughs> jason's going to uh jason's going to make a video about this i bet you thought i know jay he's going to do it he will do the video he'll do a video on that i know him i know him and you're right and i missed you bro I, I do pray for you we haven't talked for a while it's not that I, I don't care i have been praying for you bro and it was nice to see you today sam and uh i miss you i thought maybe i don't know maybe maybe i i smell or something i don't know we're not talking i don't know why when we haven't been talking but it's not that i haven't been thinking about you i haven't uh I have been praying for you, uh, Sam, and 
I'm worried about you because I haven't heard much from you over the last three or four months, I think. So, but anyhow, we're going to read one last scripture and then close in prayer. Yeah, turn with me to Psalm, Psalm 1. Psalm 1, and we're closing in, in scripture. Hey, Sam, Sam, here you are, Sam. Sam, here we are, bro. I thought you had like timed out, so because that happened to you the other night, didn't it? So, yeah, had... yeah. Because if if it, if if it there's rain outside or some kind of dark clouds, it gets a bit thing. I mean, it affects the internet, but I've got good internet now. It's it's an internet box, so it's not. I was going to say fine. compared compared to your early days in Ghana, your internet's actually all right now. It's not bad. Yeah, it's not it's not on the phone. I'm not on the phone. I have internet box. I have an internet box. I pay I pay like a couple of hundred CDs, twenty pound. It lasts for a month, and I'm away. And the only time it goes funny is if the cats are jumping on it, <laughs> or there's some kind of funny interference in the down. sky with the clouds and things. So, so I'm going to finish. If have you got any anything, any last thing you want to say before we go, Sam? It's nice to see you. Bro. It's nice to see you. Just give me one second. Sorry, I'll be right back. Okay, okay. Okay, so if you get to Psalm 1, we're going to close in prayer. And all these books have to go back on the shelf. Yeah, so that one's got to go back. That one's got to go back. So just wait for Sam and we'll read Psalm 1. And then we'll have a little prayer. Yeah. So there is the goals here. There is the goal here. And we have to do the goals here. And uh, these go over here. So, okay, Sam, I'll get you yeah, have the yeah, last yeah. word, and then oh. I'll read Psalm 1. Uh, if you want to read Psalm 1, you can do. Uh, no, no I'll, I'll, I'll let you read it. That's fine. Um, I just wanted to almost just comment on, uh, is it Michelle Sherry? Uh, mentioning yeah. Sam Shamoon, anyway. Um, all I'm going to say is, uh, it's about, well, my only comment about Sam Shamoon is, I'll put it this way. Do you remember there used to be like a little trio? It used to be David Wood, Sam Shamoon, and Anthony Rogers. Yeah, yeah. D David Wood and, and Anthony Rogers, in terms of on more of a friendship basis, they won't have anything to do with Sam Shamoon anymore. Okay. Neither of them will. Okay. Like, like, uh, and that says a lot about where Sam Shamoon is heading, to be honest. Is, um, I saw a live stream not so long ago. Where he was having a crack at James White. Don't get me wrong, I'm not exactly James White's biggest fan, but he was having a crack at him for the fact he was a Calvinist. And um, I just think I put a comment saying something along the lines of like, surely his reformed position shouldn't come into this because he was critiquing some of his views on the Bible. He was, or some of the comments he had made about the the Bible. And I was like, surely his reform position doesn't come into this. And he just, and Sam Shamoon said something to me like, uh, I don't belong to the same, to the same heretical church that you do go away. You, I'm not going to repeat what he called me. <laughs> and, uh, I just thought, oh, wow, really? All I said to you was surely his Calvinism basically doesn't come into this. That's all I said to you, Sam. And you just mm. cursed, cursed me and blocked me like nice one. Um, but also my last word, my proper last word would be, I think um, there's a lack of discernment at the moment um, within the apologetics realm and people, I think, more on an individual basis. So when I say an individual basis, I mean people like yourself, people like me, we had Jono earlier. We need to start discerning for ourselves who's sound and who's not. Like no one's got everything nailed down to a T. Have they? But but it's more that on the fundamental things, the the you know the inspiration of scripture, 
doctrine of God, etc. Yeah, yeah. If you're sound on these things, then you're a brother to me. You know, we we could disagree maybe because I know, for example, uh, John O isn't going to agree with you and me, Jason, on on say the the tulip kind of thing, Calvinism or the reformed position. He's not going to agree with us on that, but that's fine because I know that John O still holds to all the same things the important if you like same things that you and me do and that's what's important we all need to start discerning properly for ourselves mm. you know uh, i think that's so important um because uh, there are i don't want to i don't i don't want to use use a label on bob like as a false teacher so i think there is some good things that bob has said and bob does continue to say um but we need to discern uh like the false doctrines we need to discern yeah. also the false evangelists to a degree like what 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 are they offering you what are they inviting you to mm. so that would be my sort of final word i think uh it's a good point brother um there's a serious lack of discernment around that's why bob and people like that but the thing about this discussion that we've had uh and i know that Arul's done some and i know that john has done some this honest discussion in the higher apologetic realm there's kind of like a conspiracy of silence we won't talk about inspiring philosophies <laughs> stodgy views or you, actually you um because john o john o referenced ben earlier um he's on holiday at the minute but the last time i spoke to him so you know you you and you and uh ben have had some had some scrapes in the past yeah. and he doesn't usually he doesn't usually say jason was right on something but we were we were chatting about uh sort of people like bob and people like sam shamoon the other day and he just goes do you know what jason was right about one thing sam i go oh one thing is it he goes yeah he was right about one thing if you bash Islam, you get a pass, don't you? And it's wrong. It's wrong. <laughs> you know, and, <laughs> and like, uh, I was, and I just, I, it's more of a joke, you know, he, he does actually like you, Jason. It's just because of all the, the little battles and skirmishes you guys had in the past. But you know, that's, that's where the joke I, 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 I miss him. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm still grieving for him now. I know that. Yeah, I know. Uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But he's, um, but you know, it's funny how, uh, he just goes, Jason was right about one thing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, but I think uh, the this issue of, of ecumenicism where these apologists, evangelical so-called, so-called evangelical apologists, especially I'm talking about, they, they have this conspiracy of silence. They get to this fame that they have and it's don't touch my anointed. You, you, you can't talk about the fact that the guy believes in theistic evolution or is wonky on the doctrine of hell or is is wonky on on inerrancy uh, keep it quiet we can't say that and yet they'll all sit in a room together having a, a laugh and everything but yet some of the fundamentals in some of the teams that you see are shaky very shaky but it, it and, and 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 christians or many people are watching these things and they don't say anything so it's I've I've noticed the a road done video and John o done a video and then you've uh, providentially God used you to get me to do this video. I don't together. I don't I don't have a platform, but I know you do. So I I wasn't trying to use you by the way, but I knew this was a topic. Yeah, no, it's okay. About. I know you weren't trying. I know you you just knew that I would respond like in a as a friend. You did that. You didn't use it to do it to to manipulate me or anything. And I'm no. my own man, man anyway. So yeah, I know you are. No, I know you are. I just wanted to put that out there. But but um, but, but, but anyway, this conspiracy uh, of silence is thick, bro. It's thick. <laughs> no, it's very thick. But also, I think I think there's. Uh, this is just my opinion. I, I could be wrong. Um, I think it's not just a conspiracy of silence. I do think there is a a lack of genuine discernment going on amongst yeah, Christians yeah. themselves it's like because like for example Jason if you once again when I say Soko I'm not knocking JC himself right um, I yeah, actually, quite, yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah, I actually yeah. quite like the guy um but if you look at the comments of the videos that Bob is in on Soko films and he says these dodgy things look at how many people don't actually pick up on these things 
Look at how many people yeah, actually yeah, go, yeah, oh, yeah, Bob, yeah. Bo oh, Bob, God bless you, Bob. Oh, Bob, you did brilliantly <laughs> there. This, that, the other. That worries me because I think to myself, are, are you not listening to what he's saying? Like these little things yeah. that he is saying, which are actually really important and not only important, but really detrimental to the faith. Like, you know, and that's my, my con I could be wrong, but I'm just saying that is genuinely my concern at the moment is there a lack of genuine discernment going on within the church yeah, when yeah. i say within the church i mean amongst the fellow christians i i i've done that you know sam it's really interesting you say that because i've done that many times i've looked at the comments uh and i'm like i'm my my, my drawers like my mouth's like it's like they're all like oh yeah bob great 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 and i'm thinking you just said like this now if we go to the video of this one that you played it'll be all like oh yeah 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 and uh like bob, bob the lion and stuff like this you know and it's just like <laughs> yeah. and it's just like but yeah but didn't you hear what he said about scripture didn't you hear that like uh, like i guess i guess i guess what he said about scripture if you're a catholic or an orthodox it's not really a big issue but but if you're someone who's evangelical an evangelical christian what he said really should concern you you yeah, know, so. yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, yeah. I have to, anyway. I have to go shortly. So, if you okay. like, I could I could read um, Psalm one for you because also it's been a while since. Yeah, I've been yeah. Out. If you read Psalm one, yeah. and I'll, I'll close with further. Yeah. Anyway, uh, beginning obviously in verse one. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in it, the way of sinners, nor sits at the seat of, of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the lord and in his law he meditates day and night he is like a tree planted by the stems of water that yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither in all that he does he prospers the wicked are not so but they are like chaff that the wind drives away therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteousness for the lord knows the way of the righteousness but the way of the wicked will perish amen, amen. i'll close in prayer and then father we come before you today we thank you for salvation lord that you died at cross for us we confess all our sin and father any pride anything in us that's not right we ask for your forgiveness lord we ask for your mercy and Lord, help us to be faithful to your word. Help us to be faithful to the truths of your word. And we pray for Bob. We pray for others like him, that they would turn to you, Lord, and trust in you and stand on your word, Lord, and sound doctrine. So, Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for your goodness and your love to us. We thank you, Lord, that you died at Calvary for us and shed your blood for us, and that we're saved by grace and Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, these three are one. Pray for all those that have listened to this video, that they would search the scriptures and in them may know you, Lord. So, Father, we thank you for this day. We pray for those who do not know you, that they might come to know you. May we know your comfort, your strength each day, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Anyway, uh, God bless, Jason. Good night. <laughs> God bless you, nice you. Sam. Thank I'll you, you for... Soon. All right. Take care, brother. Take care. I'll, sp I'll, I'll give you a bell in the next couple of days. All right. All I'll right, see you. God I'll bless see you. Soon. you too, yeah, okay. I'm going to go in a minute. Great commission. A good point. So I'm going to go and uh say goodbye to you all god bless you i hope you've found this uh, a help hope you found it a blessing hope you found it an encouragement it's all trying to encourage yeah that's a good point he would judge by the word so that's a good point bro so i'm gonna go it's getting late what time is it here 10.59 here. It's 10.59. So I'm going to go. 
God bless you, Michelle. God bless you, Sam. God bless you, everybody who's come. John, for coming and anybody else that listens to this video. Uh, may God bless you all. May God be with you all. Take care and have a lovely day tomorrow. Have a sleep well and have a good rest. And uh, pray that you wake up refreshed tomorrow. Look into the Lord for his blessing. God bless you now and take care. Hope this has been a help. Uh, a shout out to Bob if you want to come on message me and we can have a debate and discussion about what we've said if you're not happy about anything feel free um it's mainly about bob uh teaching today so god bless you folks so if you want to come on bob you're welcome to come on you're welcome to discuss bro all right take care god bless you bye now bye